to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. This is not just one of those many programs that get people excited about money. Hallelujah. Tonight you are face to face with a revolution. It's a real radical revolution. Obadiah chapter 2 says, Saviors shall arise from Zion. And if you found your way in this place tonight, I want you to know that you are face to face with destiny. And so I like for your hearts to be set. This is not just a display of prosperity. This is a prophetic encounter that will change your life forever. Connect with the things that the Spirit of God is doing. Now is not the time to be distracted. Now is the time to receive. Hallelujah. Now is the time to receive. It's the time to receive from Him. Sing rain on me. Rain on me. Holy Ghost shower, will you rain on me? Yesterday is gone. Today I'm in need. Holy Ghost shower. Can you lift up your hands and sing it with faith in this place? Rain on me. Rain on me. Hey, Hallelujah. January 2007, I was caught up in a vision. And after a series of experiences, one of the few times I had the audible voice of God, and the Lord spoke His audible voice, four words, massive kingdom wealth transfer. Four words the Lord spoke, 2007. And I began to announce that the Lord told me, that there is going to be a wealth revolution. The Bible says, write the vision, make it plain. It says, do the vision tarry. Tonight is a time when the vision will walk on two legs. Because a generation has finally accepted the mandate of the kingdom. Massive kingdom wealth transfer. And the Lord spoke audibly to me. And told me that there is coming a wealth transfer. And over the next three days, I'd like you to know that a renaissance, a rebirth, will happen in your life. In this campus, in this city, and in this nation. Do not belittle the things that the Spirit is doing. The Bible says, blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. Master, we have toiled all night. But he said, nevertheless, at thy word. Nevertheless, at thy word. Hmm. Nevertheless, at thy word. Nevertheless, at thy word. We are coming face to face with destiny tonight. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I humble myself to receive. Go ahead and pray. I don't care whether you're a business person. Go, just go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, with meekness tonight. The Bible says, the labor of the fool will weary him. Not because there is no road. Because he does not know the road to the city.
there is a road the labor of the fool will weary him because he does not know the road to the city tonight show us show us the way show us the way thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah god bless you i'd like you to walk up to three people and tell them get set for a revolution go ahead walk up to three people and speak prophetically tell them get set for a financial revolution a world revolution Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Please be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. I thank God for this awesome privilege. This is a summit lasting three days. We are just starting tonight. Hallelujah. And over the next three days, the Lord is going to be doing great and awesome things. I like for your heart to connect with the things that the Spirit of God is doing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight I'll be teaching on massive kingdom wealth transfer. Very quickly, just as a foundation as we build. Hallelujah. From 2007, after the encounter I had, um, it created a great curiosity to study the subject of wealth and prosperity. Hallelujah. After reading many books about finances, business, wealth, prosperity, ways of making money, and all kinds of things, I studied a lot of materials, and the Lord began to teach me certain principles. Listen, by the end of this summit, you will know why some people will never be rich. It doesn't matter that they are Christians. Hallelujah. At the end of this summit, you will be glad and you will be grateful that you came. Hallelujah. There are some of us that you're coming here tonight. It's a direct product of the cry of our parents. Because the Bible says, when the nation of Israel cried unto the Lord, he sent Moses. Hallelujah. Many of us are the Moseses and the Josephs that are going to set a revolution in our homes and our communities. If you believe that, say a loud Amen. Please believe God's word tonight. Believe God's word. We are believers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 4. This can help you. The book of Acts chapter 4. Lord, we give you praise. I started studying the life of the church, the early church. Hallelujah. Oftentimes I hear preachers preach and they say, follow the ancient paths. Hallelujah. You know, follow the ancient paths. And I have been disappointed at that teaching because when we say go back to the ancient parts, I have found out what we don't go back enough. Hallelujah. When we say follow the ancient parts, we do not go back enough. And I began to study from the life of the early church, the patterns of the operation of the church. Hallelujah. And it, it, it I, I got a lot of discoveries that by the grace of God will be sharing alongside with many great people. Please do not miss any of these teachings. Four sessions, three days. And the Lord is going to be transforming our lives radically. Hallelujah. I found out something interesting. Acts chapter 4. We'll be laying a foundation tonight. Acts chapter 4 from verse 32. Acts chapter 4 from verse 32. If you are there, say Amen. And the multitude of those that believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that any of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. 33, can we read it together? One to read. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them. 34, go ahead. Neither was. Stop. Stop. Is that in your Bible? We are following the ancient paths tonight. Hallelujah. Is it in your Bible? 
Let's read verse 34 again. Just the A part. One to read. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Hallelujah. And the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday. The same today. And the same tomorrow. Forever. So either God is a liar. Or there's something wrong with the church. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the early church. Neither any of them lacked. Let's read on. For as many as were possessors of lands and houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Hallelujah. And so we see that the early church, I, I, in my study I came to find out that three things caused the church to so advance. Because if you study from Bible history, you will know that when the harvest of the church from Acts chapter 2, Pentecost, occurred, the church began to multiply. The Bible says that the numbers increased daily. And it says so mightily grew the word of God and it prevailed. The church began to multiply geometrically. And I started studying the factors, that the, the things, the factors that caused the church to multiply and the lord opened my eyes and the lord said these three things will make any church and any ministry multiply number one love i saw that they had great love great love the bible says that they were all in one accord they had great love the word love here is not eros it's not filio it's agape love unconditional love hallelujah number two they had the anointing of the spirit the Bible says how that at a certain time, handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of, um, of, of Paul. Hallelujah. And devils cried out of people as a result of the anointing. The third thing, and that's where many of the church folks, many pastors, preachers, and many believers stop, is that I found out that there was a weapon called wealth and prosperity that caused the advancement of the church. These three things were powerful keys to the advancement of the early church. The first was love. Unconditional love for God and for his assignment. They loved not their lives even unto death. They could lay down their lives. Hallelujah. The second thing was the anointing. They had great grace, the Bible says. The anointing was so strong upon them. And they walked in the gifts of the Spirit. The manifestation of the power of the spirit hallelujah and the third thing is the wealth and prosperity of the kingdom the bible says none of them lack can you imagine an entire generation of believers none had need to pray for any need they they did not lack they had in abundance hallelujah and when i found this i began to study the life of ministries that had been stunted in growth and study the life of ministries that have been making real impact for the kingdom now forget about the excesses here and there that we have in ministries little excesses and things there i found out that the ministries that refused to believe in god's financial program were the ones who were causing a liability to the church and i say it without apology hallelujah I've read many great books, wonderful books about people who went to heaven and had profound encounters. And this book blessed my life so much. And according to those people, they said Jesus Christ instructed them that the whole earth should hear that message. But the message in that book had not even gone outside of their communities. Why? Not because they didn't have anointing. Not because there are no publishing houses. Because they are poor, they are broke, they don't have money simple hallelujah and then i began to study the system of the world i began to study the system of the world what we call in the greek cosmos the social system hallelujah i began to study systems like mtv and channel o and hollywood and all of these people and i found out that there was one singular key prosperity Wealth unlimited. 
The average child in America right now, they, they asked the owner of MTV, I think, and they said, we hear that you have influenced children from age 9 to about 16. Is that true? And he laughed. He said, we have not influenced them, we own them. Hallelujah. We own them. You can log on to any site and download as much pornography as you have because somebody has paid for it. Hallelujah. Log on to any kind of nonsense. And the church has been crippled. And I began to study. And I'm going to run down with you. I, I, I started studying to find where in church history, where the missing link came about. And I was very, very surprised. Hallelujah. When you study Bible history, all right, you will find out that at a certain time, during the time of a man called Emperor Nero, all right, the church went through a great persecution. Are you following me now? There was great persecution upon the church. And so men and women had to stand and pledge their allegiance. When they became Christians, they barely survived days or months and then they would die. There was so much persecution upon the church. Hallelujah. And during that period, men did not have so much access to the Bible. Praise God. Men did not have access to the word as we did. And so, um, in the heat of all of these persecutions, men did not have time to study on things like divine health, uh, prosperity, because all they wanted to do at that point was just to make heaven. Are you following me now? Please follow me tonight. During the time of Emperor Nero, if you became a Christian, they fried people in oil, lions came and ate people up, and all kinds of things. Paraded people in the ground. The, the Christians paid the price. They paid a great price. And so, at that time, there was no need, honestly. People didn't have all the time, because if you got born again today, the probability that you would survive evening was almost zero. Are you following me? So everybody was just thinking of how to be sanctified. Are you, are you following me now? And walking with God. And now that was well. But here, here's where the problem was. During the time of another man called Emperor Constantine. According to Bible history. The Bible says. Or no history now is, is not exactly written in, in the Bible. Hallelujah. History makes us to understand that during the time of Emperor Constantine. Because of certain reforms that happened supernaturally. Believers were allowed. Are you following me now? And Christianity was allowed. They no more persecuted the people. Follow this. During the time of Emperor Nero, because of the persecution that came, people gave birth to their children who barely had access to their parents. So there was nobody to transmit the revelation of truth. Are you following me? And so during that period of the persecution of the church, a great portion of the wealth of God's principles was lost. Now when Constantine came as the emperor, believers were allowed to be free right now, uh, at, at that time. And so when believers were allowed, there was nobody again. They found out that, alright, now we are not dying in the next two weeks. We are not dying in the next three weeks. So now we are born again. What do we do? Hallelujah. Are you following me now? Because they were not used to that system of liberty. Now Constantine had allowed that let there be freedom, go ahead church, you just go ahead, have your way. Because of some supernatural events that occurred. Hallelujah. And then the believers there, all they knew was just to sanctify themselves unto righteousness and wait until the day Jesus comes. Now Satan, watch this, please follow me. Tonight we are laying a foundation. Satan crept and took advantage of that dispensation of persecution. Are you following me now? Satan crept into the church and began to deceive the church with certain revelations. That's where you will begin to hear funny revelations. Let's, let's look at some of them. Are you following me tonight? We are running through Bible history to see that from the beginning in Acts chapter 4, the Bible makes us to understand that none of the believers lacked. They had the full revelation that was required. Because you see, Jesus did a thorough job on them before he ascended to heaven. Now because of the many things that characterize the church shift 
and the age, the dispensation, the translations that happen in the church and then coupled with the persecution, the church lost a great portion of the revelation that came. Hallelujah. And Satan began to use many scriptures because you see, Satan found out that a great portion of the church did not have the revelation of wealth and prosperity. There was no money to produce Bibles. There was no money to live good and comfortable lives. Epidemic was ravaging the people. And so they were forced to begin to backslide. Hallelujah. Because although they claimed they were standing for Jesus Christ, they found out after two weeks, six months, that they did not have enough to feed their families. Hallelujah. And many of them began to subscribe to the system of the world. Because the world was blossoming then. The entire Roman Empire was blossoming economically. Are you following now? And certain scriptures were given not by God. Hear me now. Although they are in the Bible, I hope you know that Satan can pick up scripture and twist you with it. When he came to Jesus Christ, he used scriptures. Hallelujah. And so, Satan began to use certain scriptures to deceive the church. Let's examine some of these scriptures. Number one, for the love of money is the root of all evil. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. That revelation just came upon the church. And because many people were not open to the full reality of the Holy Spirit and its operation in their lives. First Timothy. It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And so Satan began to deceive the church. Then in those days, that is from that. Now please, I'm not against any church or denomination. Are you following me now? I'm just trying to lay a foundation. It was from that persecution that the movement called the holiness movement came out. What is the holiness movement? Holiness unto God. Sanctification. Now that's not wrong. I believe in holiness. Hallelujah. But the problem is when one truth begins to be overemphasized as against another truth. Hallelujah. And so those times in, in church days, if you ever showed any interest for wealth and prosperity, it was time that you had backslidden. Do you understand? And so because of the fear of what the church age then called backsliding, many people did not subscribe for wealth again. In fact, whenever there were opportunities for them to be blessed, they willingly rejected it. A point came in the history of the church now that you had to swear an oath of poverty to become a priest. Are you following me? And so those who came into the priesthood swore an oath of poverty on behalf of the church so that they would become priests. It's in Bible history. Are you following me? Another scripture. <laughs> Mark chapter 8 verse 35. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mark chapter 8 verse 35. Lack of understanding of that scripture has caused people to say, look, take the world. Give me Jesus. I don't love the world. I hate the world. But the Bible says, for God so loved the Hallelujah. <laughs> the third scripture. Godliness with contentment is great gain. First Timothy chapter 6 from verse 6 to 10. For we brought nothing in the world and will not take anything out of it. And so, when Christians made any attempt for prosperity and it didn't work, they comforted their poverty with that scripture. Godliness with contentment is great gain. We are laying a foundation tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> the last scripture. 1 John 2 verse 16. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the Lord, the love of the Father is not in him. Love not the world, neither the things in the world. And so, during that time and that dispensation, if you showed any desire to love anything money, Believers knew that you had backslidden. And so for that fear, people rejected. In fact, it was, you were commended for rejecting money. 
if any opportunity to be blessed came and you rejected it because money was termed carnal, anything wealth, the rich were doomed according to the concept that the devil crept into the Christian community. Hallelujah. And so several things began to go wrong because the gospel began to cripple. There was no funds to advance the gospel. And the world system began to advance itself. To advance itself. The world system began to use the principles that God had placed. And Satan started infiltrating the system. So much so, you see, Satan displayed a level of um, craftiness. Because when he brought a few cabal, he created a structure. So that if you will ever attain that wealth, you must subscribe to that structure. How many of you know the Masons, the Illuminatis? I'd like you to know that oh, about the world's hundred people, if not all of them are Freemasons, from Bill Gates down to the people that produce the products you use every day. Hallelujah. Statistics shows, let me tell you some statistics. 20%, hear me, 20% of the world's population controls 80%, no, controls 95% of the wealth. Is that a nice analysis? Are you listening to me? About 20% of the world's population controls about 95% of the wealth. And then the remaining 80% is struggling with the 5%. facts these are statistics i'm giving you hallelujah according to the census by unicef 24,000 children die every day from morning till now about 24,000 children have died not because they cannot live but there was no food poverty killed them does that alarm you the bible says you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden We have fallen under the anointing enough. It's time for us to rise up and take the world. Hallelujah. About 7 million children of church age in developing nations do not have access to schools. 72 million, I'm sorry. 72 million. Statistics shows that out of the 6 billion people on earth, about 3 billion, half of the world, does not live on more than two dollars a day two dollars is about 300 naira so about half of the world is living on less than 300 naira a day praise the lord more statistics in africa about 1.1 billion people do not have access to water adequate water 1.1 billion people in the continent of africa do not have access to good drinking water we have many churches many ministries new ones evolving every day yet the cry and the mandate of what the church is supposed to represent has been lost hallelujah Satan deceived the church, crept in all of these things in the church. And then we began to accept it. Hear me. It was through these processes that many of our parents were born. Hello, please look at me. Many of our parents were born to believe that wealth was so bad, that wealth was not good. And so when they gave birth to us, they did not give room, they did not give ear to listen. And then a few others were told that if you can go to school and read and acquire degrees, you'll be rich. Then they went to school, acquired degrees, got a job, until today they are still crying. The money they have been pursuing from the days they were teenagers, they've not caught it till now. Then a few others were told that if you just got filled with the Holy Spirit, automatically you get, they say, fine, they got filled with the Holy Ghost. 
until now. Don't talk in. They've not caught the money. <laughs> Everywhere is quiet now. That's the point. That's exactly the point. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then we have also seen others that truly gave and truly gave their tithe and still didn't get that money. Come on, do I have witnesses? <laughs> Either God is a liar or there is a missing link. That's why this summit was put together. Hallelujah. So what is the plot now by Satan? Number one, Satan deceived the church to believe that God himself was the author of poverty and that your poverty has a way of giving glory to God. That is error, error, error from the pit of hell. Your poverty does not glorify God in any way. The first deceit of Satan that many people, including ministries, have believed is that your poverty was well orchestrated by God himself. And that when you are poor, dejected, and you cannot do anything, then God is glorified. That is a lie from the pit of hell. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor that ye through his poverty might become rich. It's in your Bible. Even the controversial people is in their Bible. Hmm. So number one plot that Satan used to deceive the church was to bring the church to a point where we believe that God is the author of poverty. And so when poverty comes upon the church, we just say, Lord, we thank you for your will. We celebrate you. You are the Alpha and Omega. We receive your will. Let your will be done. Ah, God's will is not a mystery. The will of God is made clear. Beloved, I wish above all things that ye might prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. The will of God is not a mystery that was left for a few. For when he died, the curtain was torn from top to bottom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Be sensitive. Number two, Satan deceived the church to believe that the pursuit for wealth and prosperity was the indication of carnality and backsliding. So, we were deceived to believe that um, by the time you began to indicate any interest in trying to know and understand and pursue wealth and prosperity, then you had backslidden. And so, because we did not want to backslide, everybody just says, "World, well, go with your money and leave us alone. Go with your money and leave us alone. And they said, alright, we are going. And then we are following them and say, go with your money. Go with your money and they are turning us and we are still following. Go with your money. Hallelujah. Two scriptures. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The word love there in the Greek does not mean agape. The word love there comes from the Greek word eros. The word eros there means a lost. Are you following me? As we lay a foundation, we will find out that the word love not the world. The word the world there means um, the system, cosmos. The system. There is a system that Satan brought that is antagonistic to the operation of the kingdom of God. And so Paul is saying, do not develop a lust for that system. Neither any operation, the things that are in that system. He says, for if any man has that kind of love, eros, lust, the agape of the Father is not in him. Hallelujah. Are you following? So, Satan deceived the church. Number one to believe and right now seated where you are there are many of us that until now we still believe that God is the reason why we were born poor that God is the reason why our parents are poor that God is the reason why our brothers and sisters 
are poor and where they are the first surgery tonight is to tell you that is a lie a fallacy from the pit of hell god is not the author of poverty i receive i repeat god is not the author of poverty if poverty were good some of it would have been found in heaven because it is only done on earth as it is done in heaven the bible says the throne of god is made of gold and although somebody is dying in haiti god did not change the gold to silver hallelujah the first thing i'd like you to know tonight is that god is not the author of poverty so why are we poor why are we broke <laughs> There are many ministries today that the only thing limiting the vision God has given them is money finances. And so we men of God have been deceived. All we want now is not just converts, but wealthy, rich converts. And at any cost, even at the cost of the gospel. And a lot of people look and say, this man of God likes money. Benny Hinn spends about 10 million US dollars every week for his crusades. About 10 million US dollars every week to make sure that souls come to the kingdom. And tonight the Lord is birthing a revolution so that you will be angry with poverty forever. Because what you tolerate, you will never change. Tonight, saviors are coming out of Zion. Saviors are coming out of Zion. These statistics I gave you, you can, you can go and read some more. Let me tell you something. When I began to read about the statistics of poverty, it's amazing. Terrible and amazing. To know that the church is in this earth and we are supposed to be the salt and the light. And then while we are there talking in TV, I mean talking on, on television, somebody is there hungry. Hallelujah. And then people like Eminem and Jay-Z and the rest are opening up foundations. You think if they give those people food, they will tell them about Jesus? Jay-Z cannot open a foundation and then the people become believers. There is no other way to convince them that he is wrong because he has given them bread to eat. And we are here falling down in our churches and we are not ready to get up and go out. Tonight is a call. Rise up. Rise up. Zechariah lamented, seen in the eyes of prophecy. He said, Cry yet saying, Thus saith the Lord, My cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad. Covenant University today boasts to be one of the best universities in this nation. Because of a man who embraced the wealth package of the kingdom. Shame on anybody that refuses the message of prosperity. Hallelujah. So tonight the Lord is bringing us to a point of dissatisfaction. About 80% of divorce cases are money related issues. Needless money related issues. How many times have your father and mother quarreled and the reason is money? How many of you have seen your father laugh when they pay him? Ah, has everybody eating in this house? It means he's a good man. He's, near, he's really not as bad as he looks. Poverty is what has made him look like that. Poverty has given people an identity that is not true. Hallelujah. Please, as you get excited, make sure that the Spirit of God is preaching something serious because this is a real revolution and the lord spoke to me and said enough massive kingdom wealth transfer and then the lord began to teach me the principles and he showed me a scripture let me show you proverbs chapter 22 
Proverbs chapter 22. Are you there? The book of Proverbs chapter 22. Poverty is a curse. Poverty is from Satan. Poverty is not of God. Listen. When we hear that a guy slept with a lady, we get angry. I say, God forbid, how did you embarrass the kingdom like this? When we hear that somebody stole money or stole something, we say, ah, you're embarrassing the kingdom. But when we hear that somebody is poor, we don't say the same thing. The same vehicle brought all of them. If we resist immorality, we must resist poverty. Otherwise, we are hypocrites. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 2. Everybody read. One, two, read. <laughs> One more time, please. Can you read it? The Bible says, the rich and the poor, they all meet together. He said, God is the maker of them all. Hold on. The Bible did not say God is the maker of them so. God didn't make them so. He said God is the maker of them all. He never said God is the maker of them so. They made themselves so. Are you following me? The Bible says, Hosea lamenting in chapter 4 and verse 6. He said, my people perish. Not because Satan is strong, but because they lack knowledge. The Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. So what is the cause of poverty, really? What causes poverty? I will tell you. Poverty, look at me, is not lack of money. Lack of money is the byproduct of poverty. That's the first thing I want you to know tonight. Poverty is not lack of money. Lack of money is the byproduct of a state called poverty. Poverty is an activity of evil spirits on our minds that hinder knowledge and productivity of God's principles. Because the Bible says that the labor of the fool will weary him. Not because there is no road. Because he does not know the road to the city. Africa as a nation has wallowed in poverty in spite of our oil in a nation like Nigeria because we do not understand the principles of the kingdom. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm not teaching yet on the systems. What I want to establish tonight is the fact that God is angry at poverty. And if you truly claim to love God, you must join in this revolution to say enough is enough. I've made up my mind that my children will not grow up to know a liability called their father and then that they live in poverty. May God forbid it. My generation will not call me accursed because of poverty. I will not join the queue of many people that have been disappointments to this country. The Bible says, saviors shall come out of Zion. Many of us tonight, as we are seated, we are the solution to the cry of our parents. You have watched your parents cry. Many of us have known what it means to sleep without food. Many of us have known what it means. How many times have you been tempted to derail the part of the spirit and of the kingdom? You know, when you hear that a lady slept with somebody for school fees, the first thing he says, God forbid. Keep quiet. Shut your mouth first. Don't be too fast to say, God forbid. Because if you give her money, she will not go and sleep. Shame on the church. We make noise and make noise and say all kinds of things. And our people go out there and there are people more than willing to pollute and pervert their life at the expense of wealth. And we sit down blasting tongues on our stages and allowing the people to die because we have rejected the gospel of prosperity. Let a generation arise that will change this. 
I don't know about you, but join me in this campaign. Enough is enough. There is a wealth transfer and we join it. We are that generation. The Bible says so that they without us would not be made perfect. We are that generation. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be poor. I reject poverty. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, I reject poverty over my life, over my family, over my ministry. I reject it. I reject poverty. I reject poverty. I reject it. What you permit, what you receive, what you tolerate, you will never change. You will never change. After the movement, the Spirit of God began to breathe on many people. Because the Lord wanted a real change. A change upon the nation. The church had been misled so badly that we have received poverty as part of the way of life. Part of our cross, we call it. <laughs> Nonsense. What the Bible calls cross is not what Jesus did. If you could help, he would have given you some. It's because you couldn't help. That's why he paid all the price alone. Even if he left 1%, the church will still be struggling to complete it. Let nobody fool you. The work is done. Christ did everything. Now we have a part to play. No questions. But let me tell you, your part is not dying on the cross. He died for you so that you can live for him. If you want to die again, you are dying for yourself because he has paid the price. The Lord began to open the church to a revelation of certain scriptures. I want us to consider this year. The Lord is going to be raising millionaires in this place. I know it doesn't make sense, but believe it. By the time we finish with the teachings, you will find out that the purpose of prosperity is not for you to line 90 cars and be making noise and disturbing people in the, in the nation. So don't just leave with this revelation tonight and start running and saying you are rich. Come and finish the sessions first. Because all the sessions are complementary. 1 John chapter 1, 3 John, sorry, chapter 1 verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. And be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Is that in your Bible? Beloved, I wish above what? Above what? Even above the divine health and all of these things. Listen, look at me. Do you know that Satan prefers a healthy church than a prosperous church? Because when you are healthy, you are healthy for yourself. But when you are prosperous, you can bless many people. The potential of prosperity in the kingdom is endless. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. I want to make it simple enough so that everybody will have a biblical basis to believe that it is God's desire for you and I to walk in kingdom wealth and prosperity. 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 from verse 9 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 from verse 9 if you are there say amen for ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich did you read that he was rich let nobody deceive you that Jesus was a pauper on earth the Bible says while he walked on earth he was it's in the Bible he only became poor for one reason because it was a substitutionary sacrifice. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich. Yet for your sake he became poor. To the end that you and me. Through his poverty. The exchange. The substitution of his poverty. Might be rich. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. But God is able to make all grace abound towards you. 
that ye always having all sufficiency in all things might abound unto good works. So if you do not have all sufficiency, you cannot abound to every good work. It says, until you have all sufficiency in all things, then you will abound unto good works. What are the good works? The blessings, the endless blessings that your prosperity can bring to the church. So that you will abound in every good work. Haggai chapter 2, quickly. Haggai chapter 2. I'm showing us scriptures. Because anything that is not founded upon the word of God should not be believed. It should not be founded upon the theology of men. It should be founded upon the integrity of the word of God. Haggai chapter 2. Verse 6. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once... It is a little while and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake the nations that talks of revival are you listening to me it talks of revival the end time revival I will shake the nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with my glory thus saith the Lord I will fill it verse 9 the silver is mine and the gold is mine saith the Lord of hosts. The tools that will be the provisions for the shaking belongs to me. And so he's saying, have the confidence. Believe that there is coming a shaking. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. Let's run through more scriptures. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. The church has not been taught the message of prosperity. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God For it is he that giveth thee what? Read it, it's in your Bible But thou shalt remember the Lord your God For it is he that who gives people the power to get well? Satan? How can God give you the power to get well and be laughing at your poverty again? Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get well. Some versions use the ability to produce well. God is interested in your prosperity. Hallelujah. I'll give you three scriptures. We'll not read them, but I'll give you quickly. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 10 to 12. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 10 to 12. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 to 12. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 to 12. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. The scripture I love so much. Cry yet saying, thus saith the Lord, my city is true prosperity shall be spread abroad my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad hallelujah god began to bring this scripture and certain believers began to receive it they began to receive it our fathers of faith began to receive it and say come wait a minute something is wrong all of this poverty has brought enough catastrophe on the body there is room for change and tonight, if you will agree that there is room for change, then this is the foundation of your prosperity. Listen, don't be deceived and say, I come from a wealthy family or I've been comfortable. You will be learning in other sessions that are coming that the prosperity of the kingdom is not just about you. It's about the king and his kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's summarize what we have been able to get today. Number one, that it is God's will for every believer to be blessed and prosperous. The first point to know tonight is that it is God's will. Everybody say after me, it is God's will for me to prosper. One more time, say it is God's will for me to prosper. Point number two, that God is not the source of poverty. Poverty, lack, 
stagnation are a deliberate attempt by Satan to cripple the progress of the kingdom of God. Poverty, lack, and stagnation are a deliberate attempt by Satan to cripple the advancement of God's kingdom. If you see it that way, you will see it as an enemy and you will conquer it forever. Say it after me in the name of Jesus. I believe that God is not the author of poverty. God has packaged a system of wealth, blessings, and prosperity. And I walk in it in the name of Jesus. Number three. Tonight, I want you to know that the first step out of poverty is to believe in God's financial provision. The first the number one step out of poverty is to believe that there is a financial provision. Because if you do not believe it, you will never walk in it. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. The performance is only for them that believe. Believe in God's provision of finance and abundance. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I believe in God's wealth program for me. In the name of Jesus. I receive the fullness of the wealth and the prosperity of the kingdom. Number four. The first step out of poverty is to accept full responsibility for your present position. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. I don't care what situation has surrounded your life. We live in a generation where men always pass blames to others. Everybody who has made a radical change in his life, first of all, accepted responsibility. So if you are poor right now, humble yourself and accept responsibility. Hallelujah. Accept responsibility. And say truly, I know that there is a reason. There is a reason. God is not unfair. He is not unjust. If I am poor, there is a reason. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame or Basanjo or Yaradua or good luck. I see people blaming people, blaming lecturers, blaming ABU, blaming the whole world. Accept responsibility tonight and say, I take the responsibility to pursue my financial destiny. When you make that decision, then you are ready for change. Until then, you will never see any change. Hallelujah. So say after me tonight, in spite of what has happened to me, I accept responsibility and I am open for change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe these things that we've shared in this place tonight? You believe it? The aim of this teaching tonight is to begin to lay the foundation and let us believe, get it out of our minds. That mentality of complacency to believe that poverty is God's will for us. Many of us from tonight will come out in your room and stand and say, Oh my God, many of our parents have been happy. We've sang hymns about poverty and thank God and clap for ourselves after it. From tonight, it will change your mind because you know and believe that it is not God's will. It is not God's will. It is not God's will. If we can accomplish that, then tonight's session has been a success. That you know and believe that Satan is behind your poverty and that poverty Poverty, like other things, immorality and the rest, are a deliberate attempt by Satan to cripple the advancement of the kingdom. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that we can take responsibility and change the church and bring glory to the Father? Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Lebranta satabala rabakalia. Raketepo sebadina kambradista. Rateka brandige delemos. Impras tipas to brante ketebosa. Rakete balana bako prashtana. Don't look at me. Go ahead and pray. This is the season. This is the season. This is the season. Kashkatam pratani makaya. Go ahead and pray. 
believe i believe i believe go ahead and pray ro shekete bakasatala makaya rento sopretene maya go ahead and believe and say lord i believe i repent of every time i have accepted satan's counsel and agenda go ahead and pray pray keto satabaya say tonight i realize that poverty is from satan is not from god you are too good you are too kind you are too great to inflict your chosen people with poverty and lack and stagnation go ahead and pray say lord tonight i believe i believe i believe i believe i refuse to be poor i make a decision on this day that i and my family and my generation will not know poverty i accept responsibility dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline